Hi, I'm Simon from Ridge Monkey. Well, what can I say? Game season is upon us. I'm lucky enough here to have a couple of fresh partridge that were only shot a couple of days ago. They've been plucked, they've been hung. The flavor's gonna be fantastic. So I've got some special little ingredients to go with this. Some stunning little chanterelle mushrooms. That time of year, we've got some nice little Italian pancetta. Got a bit of chicken stock, a nice bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. We've got some gnocchi, some thyme, some red onions, some parsley. So first of all, what we're gonna do is just turn on the stove. Now you can see I'm using the new Ridge Monkey pan. Uh, it's our Connect Deep Pan, splits into two. We've got a grooved pan there that we're gonna use for frying, and then this that we're actually gonna simmer, make a broth, and uh, poach the whole partridge in. So first of all, I want to actually seal these. We're going to lock the flavour, we're going to start that cooking process and just get a tiny little bit of colour on the skin. So we're going to turn the stoves on and heat this pan up. There we go. Now we haven't got that pan on too fierce. You don't want it on too fierce. We're not going to try and burn the skin off. We just want to lightly colour it. So into that, we're going to add a little bit of oil and I'm also going to add a small amount of butter. Now, if we add butter just on its own, what's going to happen? That butter's going to burn. The oil will actually allow that butter to cook at a higher temperature. Uh, the oil has a higher burning temperature than the butter. So once it emulsifies and mixes together, you can heat it just that little bit much or that little bit higher without the possibility of it burning. So we just get that mix between the grooves. Our butter's melted, we're gonna put our partridge into the pan. Now once again, as you said, it's not too high. We're not looking to burn these, we just wanna color these. Now we've left these on the bone, as you can see. They are the whole birds. We haven't taken them off the bone. That's gonna come afterwards once they're cooked. Now one thing to note about using any game bird that's been freshly shot, is to actually check for shot. Now we've already gone through these, we've looked, we've tried to find as much of the shot as possible. Now there is always the possibility that you might get a small piece of shot that's stuck deep into the flesh. But anything that's fairly close to the flesh, you'll generally be able to pick out quite easily. You'll see it and you'll be able to pull it out with the tip of a knife. Just try and do that, but always beware that when you are cooking fresh game, there's always a possibility of having a little bit of lead shot still in there, so when you're eating it, just be careful with your teeth because dentist bills can be expensive. There you go, now you can see on these we've got a lovely little golden coloration. We're not looking for too much more than this. As I said, we're just looking to seal off that skin. We're just gonna release that fat from underneath. We're just actually starting to seal and cook through into the flesh ever so gently. Uh, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna set these aside in a second and we're gonna start using the pan to cook our pancetta and our onions. Right, so these partridge now, they've been sealed as much as we want. We don't want to cook them anymore on here because we are going to braise them in the stocks. So what we're going to do, we're going to swap the pans over. But one little tip, we're just going to secure these and I'm going to tip the oil out of that pan because the flavours are actually going to come out from the partridge. The little bit of fat that's underneath the skin, that's going to be in there. So we're going to use that to cook our onions and our pancetta through. The oil that we've drained out of the pans, it's, you can see that smoking now, it's in the deep pan. So the first thing, we've got these lovely onion, or cut a red onion into wedges. You could use some shallots, you could use some silver skins, anything that you want to, just to get that flavor. The red onions I use, they've got a lovely sweet taste to them. They're gonna break down and just impart that sweetness as it cooks through the dish. And they'll actually work really, really well with the Sauvignon Blanc that we've got. They're gonna take about, a couple of minutes just to start sweating down. We're not going to cook them so they're cooked all the way through because once again this is going to be almost like a broth. We're actually going to simmer it in the chicken stock and the wine. So the, the onions are going to cook in there. Uh, we don't want to cook them otherwise they're going to be overcooked. Right, so those onions have been in that pan now for about a minute and a half. They're just starting to take on a little bit of coloration around the edges where the, the actual fat sealing them against the pan. So what we're going to do now is add the pancetta bacon into there and start cooking that. Now what that's going to do is going to start cooking that bacon, bring out that little smoky flavour, but also start rendering down the fat that's in the bacon as well. So it'll just carry on with that cooking process with the onions. So we've got the pancetta and that just goes straight in. Now pancettas are lovely, it's an Italian style bacon uh, made from uh, the finest pork but what it's actually done, it's cured and then smoked and pressed. 
So ever so slightly different than, uh, than using a lardon of bacon that we'd have. Um, it's a dry cure as well, so you're not going to get any moisture coming out of there. I know you can't smell it, but I can already smell that smokiness from that pancetta. It's only just been added into the pan, but you've just got that flavour coming out immediately. And it really, really works well with game. So with partridge, with pheasant, with snipe, with woodcock, anything that you want to use with that, that pancetta is really going to bring out the flavours. Stunning. Right, next we're going to add some garlic. Now, I tend to use this ready puree garlic. Um, if you're out and about, if you're cooking al fresco, it's a lot easier to carry a tube of this than it is to slice garlic ready-made. Of course, you can already bring a ready-made or ready-sliced garlic from home, but I'm going to add about two teaspoons. And we're just going to get that mixed through. Now, you can already see that cooking through. You've got the onions in there, the pancetta, the garlic. Next that we're going to add into that pan is the white wine. So we want to reduce that just a little bit. So I've just got a small bottle of white wine. You can always use a large bottle of white wine and just drink the rest. I just managed to pick this one up. Now you can use a red wine. I tend to find that a full bodied red will actually take away from the flavor of the partridge. That's why I'm using a white. I want it quite light, quite delicate. I want those flavors to really sing through. And this is almost with the mushrooms, the pancetta, you know, it, it's gonna be a very, very delicate flavor. Next, we are just gonna add some sprigs of thyme. We've got some fresh thyme there. I'm not gonna put in the stalks. I'm literally just picking off the leaves. You could use a dried thyme, but the flavor that you'll get from this fresh will be much more beneficial. Uh, if you do use dried thyme, don't use as much. Obviously, it intensifies in flavor when it's dried. Um, so if you're looking at a teaspoon of leaves, only add half a teaspoon of dried. But as you can see, it's simplicity in itself just to be able to pick these leaves off the stalk and put them in. And now I give that, oh wow, you can already smell that thyme coming through. You've got that little scent of white wine. You've still got that smokiness of the pancetta in there. That's gonna be absolutely stunning. So the next thing that we are gonna add is our chicken stock. Now there's a nice little bit of ready-made chicken stock in there and that goes straight in. If I was going to use a red wine, I'd probably actually use a beef stock in there. Just the robustness of the beef will work with that red wine. Right, so as you can see, the liquid's now come up to a simmer. That white wine, that chicken stock has come up to a simmer and it's rolling. What we want to do is just turn it down ever so slightly and now we're going to add into there our two partridge. So we're literally going to push them in now what's happened with there, the breasts are just poking out of the liquid and that's going to create the steam and that's going to cook those through so they don't overcook. We're just going to put that lid back onto there, close that up and that's going to take about 10 minutes as we said, just slow, slowly cooking it. We're not rapidly boiling it, we've turned the heat right down, it's barely at a simmer and that's just going to start cooking those partridge through. But what it's also going to do is add to the flavour of that stock. All of that gamey flavour is going to come from the partridge, the juices from there, mingle into that stock and give us the nice taste and textures that we're looking for. Join me in about 10 minutes, we'll open up the pan, we'll see where we are and then we'll carry on with the rest of the dish from there. Right, this has now been simmering for about 10 minutes, so let's open the pan and see where we're at. Okay, I'm just going to flick this lid off ever so quickly. Oh, beautiful, there we go. So I can feel from the breast, that's actually cooked through now. It doesn't take long, these birds are only small, and with the cavities inside, that heat's just going to go straight to the breast, straight to the legs, and really, really cook them quickly. So all we're going to do now is actually take the birds out of there and get them back onto this tray. There you go, and the next one. So that's left us with that lovely liquid inside. Now in there, as I said, we've already got our garlic, we've got our thyme, we've got our white wine, we've got our red onions, we've got our chicken stock, and then all of the flavors from the pancetta and the partridge. So the next stage, just gonna bring that back up to a simmer. I said we've got some lovely potato gnocchi here and some chanterelle mushrooms. So they're both gonna go in at this stage. 
Now, you don't have to use potato knocker, you could use something like a nice little pearl barley, really, to run through there. Uh, I like these. Uh, it gives almost that nice little Italian feel that we're working with the pancetta, with the gnocchi, with the partridge, uh, a nice little light broth. Uh, so also, those are in there. We're gonna put the chanterelle over the top. Now, I'm not actually gonna push those chanterelle into the liquid. I'm just gonna let that liquid sit there and slowly cook those through. And as those gnocchi cook, they're gonna rise to the surface, then we'll stir everything through. The chanterelles are really, really delicate. I don't wanna break them up, I wanna keep them intact, but actually the flavor's quite delicate as well. So they're just gonna sit there, the flavor's gonna be enhanced, and then we'll just fold them through at the very end. Now, the last thing that I want to show you how to do while this is sitting here cooking, is we're just actually going to take the partridge off the bone. So really, really easy to do this. So here's our partridge, there are the two legs. So first of all, we are just gonna cut down and pull it open, okay? Same way as if you were doing a chicken. So we just cut around the oyster, break the bone, and then just cut through. So there is the first leg. Now, this may be a little bit hot for you, just be careful. It's a well-noted fact that chefs have hands made of asbestos, so I'm not too bad with this, but just be careful. It is a little bit hot. You can always wear gloves or put a cloth over it while you're doing it, or just wait for it to cool down ever so slightly. So the next part, we're gonna find the backbone ridge that runs straight down the middle there. As I said, just like you would with a chicken, and we're just gonna take that breast off the carcass. Take that all the way down to where the leg, uh, to where the wing bone is, and just cut through. So there you go. That's one breast off, and there we go. So we've got two legs, two breasts, and then the carcass left behind. Right. So we've actually taken the uh, partridge apart. We've taken the two legs off each and the two breasts. Our knock is cooked because it's floated to the surface of the liquid. The chanterelles are there, so I've just given it a very light mix through. And all we're going to do now is just season that up. So I've got a little bit of salt here. So we're just gonna go through with the salt. I'm gonna put a touch of black pepper, a touch of ground garlic. Last thing to go into this pan, I've got some flat leaf parsley. Now I'm literally just gonna, I'm not gonna chop it, I'm just gonna tear the leaves and put that into there. Now other things that you could put into this, you could actually add a little bit of carrot into there. That sweetness will really work. Um, serve it with some roast parsnips, that'll work as well. Uh, but there we go, the parsley's in there, the mushrooms, the knock is cooked, that stock, you've got all that white wine, you're gonna have the sweetness coming through. Uh, what we're gonna do now is actually take that, leave it on the side for a couple of minutes, uh, and we're just gonna finish off this partridge. Here we go, so we've taken that off. That's gonna sit there on the side. We're just gonna turn the heat up ever so slightly, and we're gonna add some butter to the pan. Now, earlier, we added some oil to the pan as well. Uh, because I didn't want this butter to burn. This time I want this to get to quite a high temperature, almost what they call a bernoisette, which is a brown butter. And we are literally gonna put these, uh, the legs and the breast into there, get them turned over. I just want that nice little seasoning from the nut brown butter to come through into those uh, partridge pieces. As like I said, we're just gonna wait for that to get really, really warm. There we go, and then we're just gonna start adding these in. So we've got the two legs and then the breasts. So as you can see there from the coloration, you'll probably know still a touch, little bit pink there. You've got a little bit of blood marbling from where we've taken it off the bone. That's perfectly fine because we're finishing it off in the pan. We're actually pan frying it like this. If we didn't leave it like that, then it's actually gonna overcook in the pan. This is why we've only simmered it for 10 minutes in there and it's pretty much cooked it. 90% of the way through, but we're just finishing it in here, just getting that little bit of colour, that little bit of flavour from the butter, just finishing them off. And you can see that's coming out absolutely beautifully now. And that's it. I'm now going to turn this off. These have been fried for about a minute and a half on both sides, two minutes, no more than that. That is all they need. This dish is now ready to serve. So let me get a plate. There we go. So first of all, We've got our gnocchi with our chanterelles and our onions, our pancetta, and that's gonna go into there. And you've got that lovely light little sauce that's going with it. Now, we haven't thickened that up purposely. 
I want a nice light sauce. I don't want it to be heavy and gloopy and sticky. We want it to be robust yet light. So it's really going to match the delicateness of that partridge. And then just to finish this off, two legs and the two breasts. There we have partridge with gnocchi, chanterelle mushrooms, pancetta cooked in a little white wine glass. Eh? Beautiful, just trying to expose the pure flavours of that partridge, make the most of that wild bird. It was only shot a couple of days ago, the flavours are going to be immense from there. It's not a farm reared, it's not being kept on a shelf in a packet for a few days. It is literally shot, plucked, hung and cooked. You don't get fresher or better flavours than that.